Welcome to EducateTube.com. My name is Sipsky, your host. Today I will be talking about something dear to me. It's something、um, it hits home、uh, regarding technology and education. The reason I brought this topic up is because the recent、uh, news regarding Apple's releasing an iBook into the educational system. And I was concerned because that would mean that if we do implement it, it would cause、uh, the institution, primary, secondary schools, a lot of money, perhaps in the billions. Although they claim that it will cost,、uh, is cost effective, that means save us money. Let's look at the eight things we need to consider in order to even consider such newer technology. Okay, let's look at the eight things that I came up with. I call it the assets. All right, what does it stand for? It stands for affordability, accessibility, simple, or sometimes I call it user friendly, standardization, efficiency, nonprofit, creative commons, environmental friendly. These are the eight things that we all must consider before we implement any type of newer. Technology into our school system. Otherwise, we'll be spending money unwisely. It will cost taxpayer money, and I don't know if we will benefit the educational system. Okay, let's look at the first aspect about implementing technology into the educational system. The first thing you need to consider is affordability. There's two things that you need to consider in affordability of a technology, a newer technology, is the short term goals. And the long-term goals. For example, looking at the short-term goals, how much would, so let's say we're talking about iBook here from Apple, how much let's say it would cost to implement five iBook in a classroom. And then what else is involved? For example, the、um, textbook, the e-book that you need to get licensed for. Apple claims that the book. Textbook may only cost fifteen dollars. However, that license is limited to say five years, so you may have to upgrade to another five years, or so on and so on. So there's a continual license fee. Can a、uh, uh, primary or secondary school be able to handle that kind of、um, fee? Especially when new government comes in. May cut some of these fundings, so that would be a a, a pain, a problem. Long term wise affordability, we're talking about will the technology change over time and how much will that cost? For example, I'm pretty sure iBook will then become iBook two in the next couple years or iBook three. Now, how much would that going to cost? Could be ca causing the the school system, and then of course renewing the fee, the textbook fee. Every five years, or maybe even every three years, depending on the publisher. So that would be a problem. So all these initial costs and then long-term costs, we need to consider with affordability. And this is actually the the key to、uh, technology, new technology into school. It is is it is it affordable and will it be sustainable? The second thing to consider is accessibility. This is where I believe the technology shines. Accessibility is the ability for the student, whether they have some type of、uh, learning disability or physical disability, are able still to access information, the e-books. In terms of accessibility, technology can definitely accommodate students with those special needs. For example, student who has vis who is visual impaired may uh, have uh, access to Uh, text-to-speech technology, or student who is confined to a wheelchair that may not be able to come to school on a regular basis, can still access e-book through the internet. So they can actually access the material online. So that's possible, and technology make that possible. So in terms of accessibility, student. Uh, with different、uh, learning needs, we、we'll、have no problem with that. I think what may be the problem in terms of accessibility is, for example, again tied with cost and affordability, is that will different、um, schools district 
with different uh, amount of funding, where there be discrepancy between those who have and have nots. For example, student or in a community where uh, money is limited, will they have the technology implemented uh, per student? Will there be enough computer per student? That need to be seen in the future. Whereas certain uh, community may be well off and technology in terms of accessibility uh, will be not a problem. The third aspect of implementing technology into the school is uh, how simple is the technology? Is it user friendly? Will there be a large learning curve involved? I would have to say the new generation of students um, using technology would not be a problem. It's probably more of the administration or the teachers that will need to be retrained in some of the newer technology. What's going to happen, however, is um, you know the type of interface. For example, iBook uh, probably would not be a problem because I, when Apple, when they design, I have a feeling it would be very similar to iPad and iPhone. And the new um, Windows uh, interface, the uh, Window 8 that they're coming out, are again, I think it would be very simple as well. And the re uh, previous technology that they had was the tablet PC, which I find is also quite friendly, user friendly. So in this aspect, I don't think it requires a lot, a lot of uh, learning involved. I think it will take a few hours to be able to get used to the technology. The fourth aspect is standardization of the stu school system whether it mean course curriculum, course assessment, or evaluation. Computer technology can actually help to implement this kind of standards. For example, a student can t take an online quiz and get evaluated or assessed instantly. And then they can then look at their progress, whether they have performed well or not. The material, for example, can also be shared among different teachers and share their knowledge what works and what doesn't work and the learning outcome can also be shared uh, between teachers to see whether uh, what they have implemented in their class is the same as say you know in another region of school district so in that sense standardization will be more common in a technological setting where if or they're allowed, the teachers are allowed to, to share the knowledge among their colleagues. And students, well, can um, share their knowledge within their peers, how they perform using uh, their results. So again, standardization would not be a problem with using uh, technology. The fifth aspect that we need to consider is efficiency of the technology. Can the technology help the student learn efficiently in other words, is this newer technology enhanced learning efficiently? So for example, if the student use iBook or tablet PC to connect to their knowledge, for example, some uh, say geography, will it enhance their learning? Well, that would of course depend. I would suspect, for example, if they're watching videos, um, and let's say there was a virtual labs and then there was a way they can self-evaluate themselves and they can regather the information that they learned somehow uh, whether highlighting electronically in their ebooks and then rewrite their notes or they're able to create a uh, uh, electro electronic cue cards to help them study or summarize their learning then the technology definitely will help efficiently process their information that they gathered and that they have learned. The sixth component to implementing new technology to the school system is to consider that all these things are non-profit. It is academic focus. We should not be ruled by private company taking over our school system say telling us that technology is good for us 
we need to realize that there is no profit to be made through implementing these type of technology but rather it is a tool to be used by the teachers administrators and students to help them learn better have a better learning opportunity better accessibility so all these aspects need to be addressed as that it's all non-profit in other words we should not think about profitability the only thing that is profitable profitable is the learning outcome the second last point i want to make is regarding implement technology is something i call uh, creative creative commons in other words when we're implementing uh, learning materials through ebooks or online we need to consider that it could be shared freely and not be restricted by so uh, stringent copyright uh, license or laws the reason I say that is because it would definitely dry it up a lot of the costs so let's say if we're dealing with um, um, iBook and let's say including the textbook if there was a restriction on how the book is the material copyright material is used in class for example it can only be used in one given iBook or in one given computer tablet PC and cannot be transferred from one student to another then we're in big trouble because it not only is uh, not affordable it is also limited in terms of our creativity in other words uh, what material can then be shared can then be modified that would be a problem so we need to be aware of material when shared in class and outside class should not be restricted by too many regulation and laws and technology should not be the one that hinders that in fact should enhance it the last point I want to make is regarding environmental friendly technology is the newer technology environmentally friendly a lot of the tech industry when they want to implement let's say the iBook or the uh, tablet PC using uh, to to use for like ebooks they will tell you that it's much more environmental friendly because you use less textbook so you kill less trees but let's look at this way the life cycle of a iPad or iPhone or or even the iBook that they're coming out would be around three four years so how much energy how much material chemical are needed let's say to make one of these items there's no study out there that can say for example the laptop that I'm using right now the the component of it the LCD the plastic covering the metal the toxic chemical that was used uh, the power supply that that contains some of these heavy metals that was used um, how are they recycled? Does all the material recycle and reuse for something else, or is it going to be thrown into the uh, in, in into the environment, into the ground? If that's the case, then I wouldn't say it is environmentally friendly, because if you think about the textbook, yes, it may, you may use more textbook, more paper, but remember, you grow the book. In other words, the tree is grown to a certain period of uh, until it grows a certain size and then you use that to make paper but during the period of time when you do grow those trees you are contributing to um, bring oxygen and recycling CO2 so in it actually is a more environmental friendly and more uh, beneficial to the environment than let's say uh, using a computer to read ebook remember it requires energy to turn on those ebook and on top of that it requires batteries and batteries do not last more than two years so you will have to end up um, buying a new batteries and that you have to then extract the material from the ground and then you have to recycle it and in fact I don't think they actually reuse these battery uh, they they probably make it more efficient so I do not know exactly what did they do with old batteries 
Um, so these are the things that we need to consider uh, when we're using new technology. And I, I have a feeling, and I think uh, somebody should do research on this, on let's say a iBook or a laptop, how much energy and chemical that was needed uh, to make one, and how they actually recycle all the material, and compare that to a textbook. Until that research has been done thoroughly, I would have to say technology is not good for environment. The e-books are not good for the environment. The textbook, if in comparison, are much more environmentally friendly. That's it. So I hope you enjoy uh, my presentation. Again, just to remember, remind you uh, the eight aspects of considering new technology in uh, um, schools is what I call ass sense. So it stands for affordability, accessibility, simple user friendly, standardization, efficiency, nonprofit or academic focus, creative commons, and last but not least, environmental friendly.